Hi, good morning, church. Blessed Sunday to you and your families. Uh, if you're joining us online on YouTube or Facebook, can I just invite you now to maybe not, not only say hi, uh, but to think of one thing uh, that you would like to give thanks for. And just type it into, you know, in the comment section or, or on your WhatsApp uh, cell group chat or if you're with family uh, to just share with one another one thing that you want to give thanks for uh, one thing that you say thank God you know thank God that I'm alive thank God that I have all of you with me you know whatever it is write it down now um, because even though we're not here physically um, we're attending this service online um, I'm reminded that we should still enter His gates with thanksgiving in our hearts, enter His courts with praise. So let's, let's make that a way um, that we prepare ourselves to meet with God this morning. And uh, once you're done with that, uh, would you stand up or take, adopt whatever posture of worship you wish to and yeah, just join, join us as we worship in song today. Father, we thank You that, Lord, we can continue to gather in this manner um, Lord, we thank you that um, we can just wake up and, and greet you each morning with thanksgiving in our hearts. Um, there's so much to give thanks for. Um, and Lord, in, in good times and trying times, we know that you are faithful and you are good. And we want to celebrate you. We want to celebrate uh, the fact that you have put us in relationship with you, with a God that loves us so deeply, so marvelously. Um, that wraps us around with His presence. So thank you, Lord. We worship you today through this whole service. Uh, we praise you. We worship you in Jesus' name. Amen. Blessed be your name In the land that is plentiful Where your streams of abundance flow Blessed be your name Blessed be your name when I'm found in the desert place. Though I walk through the wilderness, blessed be your name. Every blessing, every blessing you pour out, I'll turn back to praise. When the darkness closes in, Lord. Still I will say Blessed be the name of the Lord Blessed be your name Blessed be the name of the Lord Blessed be your glorious name Blessed be Blessed be your name When the sun shining down on me when the world's all as it should be, blessed be your name. Say, blessed, blessed be your name. On the road marked with suffering, though there's pain in the offering, blessed be your name. It's every blessing, every blessing you pour out. out. Turn back to praise When the darkness closes in, Lord Still I will say Blessed be the name of the Lord Blessed be your name Bless you, God Blessed be the name of the Lord Blessed be your glorious name Blessed be, blessed be the name of the Lord Blessed be your name Blessed be the name of the Lord Blessed be your glorious name so You give, oh, you give and take away Give and take away My heart will choose to say Lord, blessed be your name You, you give and 
take away you give and take away my heart will choose to say no blessed be your name sing that again you give and take away you give and take away my heart heart will choose to say i will bless you lord blessed be your name blessed be the name of the lord blessed be your name i choose to bless you god blessed be the name of the lord blessed be your glory yes sing it again blessed be the name of the lord Blessed be your name, oh, blessed be the name of the Lord, blessed be your glorious name. Lord, we praise you and we worship you. Oh, Lord, what joy it is to worship you, to praise your name, to lift your name on high. For Lord, truly only you are worthy. Only you are worthy. Thank you, God Almighty. Thank you, Father in heaven. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. It's a shelter like 
like it no other. Your name, let the nation say it louder, 'cause nothing has the power to. Let's lift this name, Your name, Your name is a strong and mighty tower. Your name is a shelter like no other. Your name, let the nation sing it louder, 'cause nothing has the power to save but Your name. Your name, Lord. Your name is power. Your name is peace. You are peace. You are love. And Lord, we thank you that you give us this promise that when we call on your name, we call on the highest authority and the highest power there is. Um, that Lord, in our moments of pain or need. Turmoil or lack of peace, Lord, when we turn to you and we call upon your name, you will respond and you will answer. So, would you just take a moment to be transfixed on the Lord, to just think about His name? The name at which every knee must bow, and every tongue confess that He is God, the Lord of heaven and earth. Just let that thought settle into your soul. Sing it out. 
my soul, it is well. It is well with my soul because of you, Jesus. It is well. It is well with my soul. Sing it is well. Sing it to your soul. heart for you have overcome the world Lord Jesus you, you, you knew it, you saw it and you give us that comfort and that assurance and Lord while some of us um, where things are good we praise and we celebrate and we worship um, and yet when things are tough and there is pain and there is turmoil or tension or things we don't understand in this world um, as it is with the current times Lord we we lament and when we lament Lord it's, it's not regret it's not resentment it's not bitterness or resignation but Lord it is a certain kind of grieving that we bring into the context of relationship with you that is always the, the, the crux of it that it must be dealt with honestly in relationship with you and that is what we want to do in relationship with a God who loves us so incredibly, so marvelously. And Lord, as we do that, may it just settle our souls that we are held by such a loving and gracious God to whom none can compare. Lord, as we end with this last song, we just want to fix our eyes on you, on who you are. On who you are and how the knowledge of that alone can speak to our circumstances. Thank you, Father. Your mercy flows like a river wide And healing comes from your hand 
Suffering children I see in your arms There is none like you Your mercy flows like a river I'm healing and healing comes from your hands Suffering children I see your arms there is none like you there is none like you no one else can touch my heart like you do and I could search Lord, I could search for all eternity long and find that there is none like you. One last time. Lord, that there is none like you. No one else can meet our needs and touch our heart. No one else can touch my heart like you do. I could search and I could search for all eternity long and find that there is none like you. There is none. Thank you, Jonathan, Jonathan and Sharon. You know, it takes one to truly have tasted the goodness of God to be able to say those words, there is none like you. Jesus Christ, who paid the price for all our sins when he had to undergo the throes of humiliation, of agony and pain on the cross, he died so that you and I may be able to experience life fully as it is. The bread that is before us and the cup, they all symbolize the love of Jesus Christ, the love of the Father for each one of us. The bread, the body of Christ broken for us. The cup, the contents of it, which is the blood of Christ poured out for the forgiveness of all our sins the cup which represents the new covenant that we have in his name we've through this season been going through the gospel of john and john 3 16 tells us that you know for whosoever believed in him shall not perish but have eternal life so as we come before the lord's table let us Remember Jesus Christ for what he has done for us, the price that he has paid for all our sins on the cross, as we partake of this with grateful hearts. Shall we all pray? Father, we thank you once again. We thank you for your son, Jesus Christ. We thank you for your love for each one of us, that because of his sacrifice, that we are able to stand here where we are redeemed of our sins, that we can stand here righteous before you only because of what Christ has done for us. So we thank you, Father, for the emblems before us as we partake of it wherever we may be in our homes. We want to partake of it with grateful hearts, Lord, knowing, recognizing that all of these are possible because of your love for each one of us. So thank you once again, and we commit ourselves to you. We commit our families to you. We pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. 
So the bread, bread that is broken for us, representing the body of Christ. In your homes right now, I ask that you may be able to distribute the emblems so that we may partake of it, uh, recognizing of what Christ has done for us and remembering Him. Let's do it, shall we, in our homes. Again, each week, uh, we come to a time of our tithes and offering. We give because God has enabled us. We give not out of a sense of duty and obligation, but we give voluntarily with a heart of thanksgiving. So, um, what we have at this time, uh, we don't have the bags to pass around, but in your homes, there are different means in which the church has prepared so that you may be able to give uh, in this manner. Uh, so the QR code is here. You can go in uh, and continue to be able to have to, to partake in this privilege and honour to be able to give to the Lord, right? to be able to give to His mission that is accomplished to our church here at Franco. Let us pray for the offering. Father, we thank you. We thank you for the privilege of being able to give to your work. We ask for each one of us that truly, Father, as we give, we give out of our heart that is in response to all that you have given us. So thank you again. We commit all of these gifts to you. May you bless it richly, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay, we have a time of uh, announcements. Yeah, uh, we do want to welcome each one of us here, wherever you may be. Again, uh, at the beginning of this service, uh, John had said, uh, "Why don't you go into your whatever your digital device, and you can are uh, able to greet one another and welcome one another in the Lord." Yeah, so a very warm welcome. Uh, we have a couple announcements that we want to make. Uh, first off. It's the Alpha Online. Yeah. There are eight lessons. It starts on the 24th of July. And this time round, uh, it's going to be on a Zoom platform. So it's be every Friday from 8 p.m. to 9 p.m. You know, the team under Gyok Chai has been really excited because uh, they've been very encouraging uh, from our members who have come in, who have told him that, they're excited about it and they want to participate and join in in this opportunity to invite friends and relatives who have perhaps not come to know Christ yet. Uh, there are eight cell groups we know that who have indicated that they will be joining this course and inviting friends and, and family members and relatives. Uh, one of the CG leaders uh, have also indicated that he has encouraged his members, at least four of them, to be facilitators in this online Alpha program. Another sister, and she's trusting God to be able to touch the hearts of her parents so that they may also be able to say that they want to come in for this Alpha program. Yeah. So here's how you can respond. There are three ways in which you can do so. Firstly, uh, if any one of you here who are listening in here, you may be a new believer or you may not yet have known uh, the Christian faith, but you know you always have a lot of questions about this Christian faith. 
Alpha is one where it is meant for seekers, meant for people who want to have questions about the meaning of life and perhaps how the Christian faith is able to address um, some of these questions. So you may be a non-believer, you may be a new believer, we want to invite you to come in to join us in this course. Uh, in this PowerPoint presentation here, you can see the link. Do register on the online uh, link that is provided for us. Secondly, uh, this is meant for cell group leaders. Uh, if uh, you have names of friends and names of relatives whom you have invited, do let your cell group leader know who they are. Because as a church, we want to be able to come and pray with you, alongside you, for these names, that, uh, th these people whom you are inviting for the Alpha course. And thirdly, um, sorry for the second part of it, uh, we just want to ask that you provide these names to your cell group leaders by Wednesday, this Wednesday, 8th July. And thirdly, if you are inviting friends and relatives, there is an online briefing session that is on the 13th of July at 8 p.m. So this briefing is meant to familiarize yourself with the new online platform so that you may be able to be an excellent host you know, for your friends, your invited friends and relatives. So quite a bit of information here, but two dates that uh, you want to remember. Next Wednesday, uh, 8 July, let your cell group leader know, or if you're not in a cell group, let the church office know of the people whom you are inviting or invited. Then on the following Thursday, on 13 July, attend, uh, for those who have invited people, attend the online briefing session. For This is meant for the alpha hosts and befrienders. Okay, one other quick announcement. Next Sunday, and we'll just swap that around. Next Sunday, we have the JSS Zoom gathering. So you remember last Sunday, we had the KSS Zoom gathering, a Zoom session, and that was quite successful. So now it's for the JSS group. So remember, parents of uh, JSS members, do contact the JSS teachers so that you may know what's going to be happen, what will happen on next Sunday when we get together virtually on the Zoom session. So remember that date. Yeah. Okay, it's my privilege right now to welcome uh, and invite and introduce our speaker for today, uh, Dr. Tan Lai Yong. Uh, most of us know Lai Yong. Uh, Lai Yong and Lei Chin have been with Franco for quite a few years, yeah? since teenage years. Yeah? They have two grown-up children in their 20s, Amber and Edward. And as you know, they have been working in Yunnan for about 14 years or so, working and ministering with the locals within that community. Yeah. So today, we are very privileged to have Lai Yong with us to share from the Word of God then the topic entitled, Pain of Parting, Promise of Peace, based on our study of John, uh, chapter 16, verses 5 to 33. Uh, we welcome Lai Yong to share with us from God's Word. Good morning, thank you. Delighted to be here, honored to be here. Let's look at John chapter 16. John 1 6, keep your Bibles open. We look at the challenging passage. And uh, my aim for today it is to ask questions so that you will be intrigued and inspired to learn more. So John 16, it is a conversation between Jesus and his disciples. It's like a sandwich. John 15, Jesus says, I am the vine, and we are to abide in him. John 17 is Jesus' high priestly prayer. And John 16, right in the middle. So we abide in him. In 17, he abides with us. In chapter 16, he teaches us about the work of the Holy Spirit. So first thing, okay, 
I think you are able to access the church bulletin. Maybe you can use your handphone or uh, look at it, church bulletin. These are the sermons you should look up to. So John Piper has taught about the work of the Holy Spirit in relation to sin, righteousness, and judgment. And right here, one of the past sermons that Dr. Freddie Boy gave, gave, be filled with the Spirit. So the first thing I need you to do is, this is a big topic. I hope you'll be intrigued, inspired, and instructed to go back and look at these two sermons, listen to them again. Too, too precious to be left on cyberspace. Then books. Okay, read books. This is the second half of the year. Let me be very stern with you. If you are a Christian and the whole half year you have not read one Christian book, brothers and sisters, invest your time wisely. Read a good Christian book. So I introduce two more traditional, Baptism and Fullness by John Stott, and the other one more uh, new, perhaps, to some of us. Uh, it's an old book, though. It's called Surprised by the Voice of God. Then, uh, our brother Jimmy Tan has written an excellent article just released on Sword and Light about the Holy Spirit, the one who cannot be locked down. Go on Sword and Light website, read about it, learn. Okay? And then, one more. Let's rediscover the love of God together, the work of the Holy Spirit, Alpha Online. Come, sign up, bring a friend. Let's pray. Dear Jesus, thank you for this day that we can look at the book of John again. Instruct us, rebuild us, teach us, inspire us as individuals, as families and cell groups and as a church, Lord. Teach us, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So, uh, three Ps, as it were, to share with you from John chapter 16. Uh, one is parakletos, the Greek word parakletos, and then the pain of parting and the promise of peace. Keep your Bibles open. Keep referring to John chapter 16. Uh, we read John chapter 16, verses 5 to 11. But now, I'm going to him who sent me, and none of you ask me, where are you going? Jesus is speaking to the disciples. Verse 6. But because I have said these things to you, sorrow has filled your heart. Verse 7. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage that I go away, for if I do not go, the helper, the parakletos, will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. And when he comes, he will convict the world concerning sin and righteousness and judgment. Concerning sin because they do not believe in me. Concerning righteousness because I go to the Father and you will see me no longer. Concerning judgment because the ruler of the world is judged. So this word parakletos is unique. It's been translated uh, in different versions of our English Bible, King James as comforter, helper, advocate in the NIV, a friend, uh, Eugene Peterson's message, uh, and counsellor in the Revised Standard Version. And then in Chinese version, it is... Okay, I cannot read Chinese. So, parakletos, this word has been used five times, only five times in the New Testament, and always by the Apostle John. Okay? So I told you this sermon will ask you many questions. So one of the assignments for you or your family and cell group is to ponder, why? Why only the Apostle John, the disciple whom Jesus loves, why only he uses this word, parakletos? So Jason introduced us to some of the legal aspects of this word. So parakletos used five times, four times in the Gospel and one time in 1 John. And then ask yourself, in the gospel, it always refers to the Holy Spirit. But in the letter, it refers not to the Holy Spirit. So he is an advocate. The Holy Spirit is our helper, our counselor, our advocate. What does this mean? Some years ago, I had a student who suffered an accident and became physically disabled. He was contracted, actually, 
to work with the government department. And as his uh, teachers, some of us became afraid that you know that the government department will look at him because of his accident and say, "Oh, he is now physically disabled and so cannot do the job." And so we became his advocates. We encouraged him to go for good physio, encouraged him to take on CCA, and then we also uh, visited him when he was on attachment back to his government department and talk about his abilities rather than his disability. Now, this has to be done subtly, you know, because if we were too overt in our championing of him, he might one day say, oh, 我有这份工作,因为是陈医生拉关系。or he may one day say, oh, I got this job because we pull strings. But it wasn't about pulling strings. It was about empowering him, training him, shaping him up, and also influencing the decision makers that this guy is able. But if we went on too strongly, he might feel that he got the job because we pull strings, and the decision makers will feel that they have to give the job because we applied pressure, political pressure or influence. The Holy Spirit is our advocate. He nudges us on, pushes us on, trains us, grooms us. But it's not a free ride. So the Holy Spirit, so Jesus is explaining to the disciples. And here this is a tough part of the passage in chapter 16 because we are, as it were, eavesdropping into this conversation and trying to understand the complexity. And Jesus says that when the Spirit of truth comes, He will guide you into all the truth. So why the Holy Spirit come? In John chapter 16, two reasons. One is to guide the disciples into all truth. And then John chapter 16, verse 14 says, the Holy Spirit will glorify Jesus. Okay. So these are the two reasons in John chapter 16 why the Holy Spirit comes. Okay. Glory without truth is very dangerous. Truth without glory. The word glory is not show off. Truth without glory is like lighting a lamp and putting it under the bush. So the gospel truth is magnified because it changes life and because it brings changes. So why the Holy Spirit comes is to guide us into all truth and also glorify the Lord Jesus Christ. And then the concerns. When he comes, he's concerned. He will convict the world concerning sin, righteousness, and judgment. Concerning sin, okay, if we put it this way, concerning sin because they, the disciples, do not believe in him. Concerning righteousness because Christ is going to the Father. Concerning judgment, because the ruler of the world is judged. The Holy Spirit will teach us this. First, sin. Sin has everything to do with what you and I believe. Sin in this case is not just pride or a bad act or a sin of omission. It is about the cross. It is, do you believe that Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life? So the Holy Spirit will convict us about this. And if you don't believe, this is sin. The other deeds that we do or don't do are expressions of our belief or disbelief in Jesus Christ. Righteousness, on the other hand, if sin has everything to do with my belief, righteousness, on the other hand, in fact, it has very little to do with you and I. Righteousness, imputed and given freely by the grace of God, is because Christ goes to the Father and that is through the cross. In fact, this passage is teaching us about Jesus leaving. That means he's dying on the cross. Okay. So he goes back to the Father through the cross. So sin has everything to do with me, my belief, my ideas, my conviction, my worldview, and therefore the expressions of that that follows. 
But righteousness, no matter what we do, our best deeds are by filthy rags before the Lord. Righteousness is because it's available to us because Christ, through the sufferings of the cross, goes to the Father, resurrection, and brings us along, redeem, and judgment. The prince of the world has been judged, which means to me I have no reason to give excuses. If you put it simply, one of the common ways why we do something wrong is because we say hey, everybody else also do. Everybody else also do. So bo pian or never mind. Or some of us, especially men, become cynical, skeptical, and we don't care. We burn out, we get apathetic. These are lies of the devil. And Christ, by the death on the cross, tells us the prince of the world, the ruler of the world, is already judged. No excuses. We cannot lump our decisions along with the devil's accusations or his tricks. So, Parakletos, the Holy Spirit comes to teach us. Okay. He will guide us into truth. He will glorify Jesus, teach us about my sin, the righteousness God wants to give to me and to us, and teach us that there's no excuse. Don't blame the devil. There is no excuse because he is judged already. So parakletos and the pain of parting. Okay, Truly, truly, I say to you, Jesus tells them that they will weep and lament, but their sorrow will turn into joy okay, because Jesus is parting. Some of the disciples wanted Jesus to stay and to be the king, to overthrow the Roman Empire. But Jesus is going and they are sad. And Jesus comforts them and says, when a woman is giving birth, she has sorrow because the hour has come. But when she has delivered the baby, she is no longer sorrowful. There is joy. There is the pain of parting. I shared just now in 1996, my wife and I left Singapore with our one-year-old baby to go to Yunnan. Our brother Gyok Chai was at the airport sending us off and miraculously got my wife 80 kilograms of free luggage uh, and allotment uh, without paying any cent more. Evelina Ko went with my wife and we went to Yunnan. And from Kunming to our town in Sichuan Pana, we had to take a domestic flight. At that time, in the 1990s, the Kunming airport was, was very basic and very simple. There was no McDonald's, no Jewel, uh, no Kopitiam. And while Lei Chin was looking after our bags and bags of luggage, you know, extra supply of diapers, extra supply of milk powder, baby vitamin, everything, because we, we didn't know whether we can get anything out there in Sichuan Bana. As they were looking after the, our goods, our worldly belongings at the airport terminal, Amber at that time was about one, one and a half years old, and I went out to the tarmac. You can just walk to the tarmac. There was no security. And she was playing on a sand heap. They were reconstructing something. And there was gravel and sand. She was happily digging, playing. And I stood by the runway, by her, by this pile of gravel, watching her play. And then I watched the silk airplane that brought us from Singapore to Kunming taxi, go on the tarmac, go on the runway, and I watched a silk airplane flew back to Singapore. It was parting. It was going away. And there was something in me. I said, I wanted to reach out to that plane and say, don't go. What have I done? What have I brought my family, my daughter, into this strange place? The language I don't read, what are we doing? It's like an umbilical cord being cut. And I wanted to reach out to the plane and grab it out of the skies and say, come back, don't go, stay. What's the pain of parting? I'm sure you have experienced the pain of parting. 
Jesus Christ on the cross as he was dying said, My God, my God, why have thou forsaken me? The Holy Spirit comes to comfort us and to show us the necessity of Christ's death on the cross and the depth of pain that Christ will go through and the Heavenly Father too because of the sin and the righteousness and the judgment. And there's a promise of peace. I have said these things to you that you may have peace. In the world you have tribulation, but take heart, I have overcome the world. So the Greek word for peace in this case is arene. Right? Now, arene is more than peace in my heart. It's more than, oh, I feel okay. It is a state of national tranquility. It's a state of secure, security. It is blessed are the peacemakers. It is active. It is not like, okay, I'm all right. It goes beyond you and I. Because it is peace bought by the suffering on the cross. So it is unique that the same word, anguish in childbirth, and in this world you have tribulation. It's the same Greek word that is used in both situations of which for painful childbirth, the anguish comes new birth. For tribulation in the world comes peace. This is the hope we have. Okay. So assignment, look through the Gospel of John to uncover or discover where else does Jesus use this word, Irene. Where else in the Gospel of John is this word used? And therefore, luxuriate, enjoy this peace that God has given you. It goes beyond whether you feel good or not. Whether you feel good or not is a starting point. It is important, but it challenges us to be peacemakers. So the Holy Spirit guides us in this anguish and tribulation. It guides us to new birth. Okay. As medical students, uh, we learn about delivery. In the old days, in the 1990s, uh, medical students, fourth-year medical students, we have to learn about childbirth and delivery and actually, actually deliver babies because we were rostered on duties. At those time, there were a lot more babies at KK Hospital and we had to really deliver babies. And most of the time, it's very well done because God is a wonderful creator. Most babies come out normally. Okay? And we learn in the theory, in our anatomy books, that the biggest part is the head. Once the head comes out of the birth canal, most times, baby follows out. Okay? So because the biggest diameter is the head. That is the theory we learned. And we actually had delivered babies. One day, a KK hospital, uh, these smart-looking us, uh, medical students, with their tie and the stethoscope around our neck, was walking past the taxi stand. And there was a commotion because this toddler has stuck his head through the railings of the taxi stand, the metal railings, and then cannot come back. And then baby was crying, people were panicking, and so we medical students went to the rescue, and we tried to pull the metal bars apart so as to pull the baby head back. Cannot, because metal bars are stronger than us. Some say, take, saw the metal bar, some say, call the fire engine. And then, now, we had the knowledge of childbirth. And then, an attendant, a hospital attendant, you know what we call the ama. In this case, she was an Indian lady. She came, she looked at the situation, baby's head stuck across the railing, and she did what we were all, le all doing, what we had all learned in the delivery labor ward. She flipped the shoulders around, and pull the whole body out. Because at that age, the head is still the largest part of the body. If the head came through, instead of trying to pull everything back, just deliver the baby, like in the labor ward. She guided us. Namelessly. And then she went away. And all of us felt so foolish. You and I have lots of Bible knowledge 
information. The Holy Spirit helps us to apply truth in our life. Bring us new birth, new life, new joy. So if I may tell some stories about my mother who guides me in many truths. When I was a little boy, often shared that we grew up in a gangster area, so too poor to go to kindergarten. My first day of school, surprise, was primary one. And my mother packed my bag and said, you are going to school. I have no idea what school was. And I say, why should I go to school? And she gave me three instructions. First, to play, study, and three, cross the road carefully. Three things she told me, and they stuck with me. Go and play, study, cross the road carefully. Okay. And, you know, the Holy Spirit will bring to mind what Scripture is about. So all my life, whether in primary school, secondary school, junior college, and later university, I had these things in mind. Why do I go to school? Why do I go to university? One, study. Two, play and make friends. Three, cross the road carefully. So I became a Christian in 1974. and attended this church since then. My mother, through the witness of Esther Liu in our church, uh, became a Christian in 2004. And she's getting on in years. And peace and joy on earth because she's hated for eternity with the Lord Jesus Christ. And we do things together. Again, the, the application of truth. Uh, she's already visually disabled. She's blind. When we go to the market, I don't buy vegetables for her. I let her choose. But other than trying to understand her ability, her mood, I wanted to know whether she has a rainy, she has peace or not. Is she peace in my heart or not? Peace in her heart or not? And so one day I broached the question to her. I said, Mom, when you die, where would you want your funeral? And she said, of course, downstairs. I said, can I hold a funeral in one of those casted parlors? She said, no, then my friends cannot come. And she says, I would like to have my funeral week downstairs and for five nights. I said, okay. Uh, then I said, but mom, now your children may be overseas, your grandchildren may be overseas. So if you die and want to hold the children for five nights, maybe there's a wedding going on or maybe other funeral, then how? She said, Higher, higher, how? Ah? Then I say, can I do it this way? If the priority is to hold the wake downstairs, can it be such? You know, we are Chinese, right? Pantang, right? Usually don't talk about such things or no. But I thought I need to get there. I say, can I do it such that maybe put uh, the body in the mortuary for a few days and let us find out a good time within a few days so that we can chop the void deck downstairs and for you to have your wake services. And she said, huh, like that can? Ah? I said, uh, I spoke to the funeral directors. They said, can. Then she asked me, will I be cold? <laughs> I said, no, you'll not be cold. You'll be dead, right? <laughs> and she says, where will I be? I said, you'll be with the Lord Jesus. Then she understood. She said, yes, can. It's okay. Put me in the shikwai, in the, mod, in the fridge. Huh? And then, when void deck is available, I can have my wake. And I say, why last time was the urgency to have the wake immediately when a person passed away? It's because of these old ideas that if a person dies and the family don't moan and pray and chant, it go deeper and deeper into hell because you have not been a good person. That's why your, your children don't love you and not feel you. I say, do you have, still have the idea? She says, no, I'm with Jesus. I'm at peace. You can take your time. The Holy Spirit teaches us truth, concerns. New birth, new life, new joy. Out of sin, Jesus Christ on the cross gives us new birth. New life, because He goes to the Father, our righteousness is secured. New joy, we are not tied down by the standards of the world. John Stott says, the Holy Spirit is not in a hurry. Character is the product or produce of a lifetime. So I commend to you, John 16, that you will go back and read, study, pick up the books, follow the online 
uh, sermons that have been given so that it will equip and empower us to serve locally as well as regionally. Okay. Whether it's Kampong Siglap across the road, serving our younger generation in JSS and the youth, and keep praying for overseas missions okay, where our church has worked in. Let's pray. Dear Lord, thank you for this time that we can learn about the Holy Spirit. Thank you that we have new birth in you and that you are creating in us new lives. O oh Lord, help us in our work, in our parenting, in our family life to choose you first. And Lord, as our nation goes into elections, I pray that you'll give us a wise, honest, and righteous government that, Lord, we can continue to live in peace, to learn from you, and to serve you. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you, Lyon, uh, for the message, sharing from God's Word. I thought maybe it's uh, appropriate this time, let us spend a few moments to reflect on what we have heard. You know, in, uh, for each one of us who are believers in Jesus Christ, we know we have the gift of the Holy Spirit. Has the Holy Spirit been speaking to you what have you heard? And how are you responding to it? Let's spend a few quiet moments to think about the message that was shared and how have we ourselves relied on the gift of the Holy Spirit in the decisions of our lives. You know, there's a verse um, from later part of John. I know we, we looked at John 16 and John chapter 20. And these were words by Jesus when he appeared. This was after Jesus' resurrection. He appeared to his disciples. This is John chapter 20, before his ascension. John, uh, Jesus said this to his disciples. He said this, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, I am sending you. And with that, he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. So this morning, as we close this service, there is a song that talks about this. It's a song that should be our prayer as we close this service. It says, Breathe on me, Breath of God. The stanza says, Breathe on me, breath of God. Fill me with life anew, that I may love what thou dost love, and do what thou wouldst do. Shall we all sing this together as a prayer to the Lord? on me breath of God fill me with life anew that I may love what thou love and do what thou Breathe on me, breath of God, till my heart is pure. 
chill with thee I will, I will to do and endure Breathe on me, breath of God Breathe on me, breath of God Till I am holy thine Till all this earthly part of me Close with thy fire divine Breathe on me, breath of God, so, so shall I never die, but live with thee the perfect life of thy eternity. Church, let us receive this benediction from the Lord. And now may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Have a blessed week. Vote wisely. Vote with the discernment of the Holy Spirit.